career. Now, I used to teach all of this to between two and 4,000 people all over the world. So, now I have a smaller crowd, but it's all about enlightenment to me. If it was just, you know, just people coming to me just to help with their career and to make more money, you know, it's different. Everyone would sign up. But because this is about enlightenment and I don't advertise all over the place, I don't look for people to hire me to go to these companies and do all this stuff anymore, I'm here for you. With all of this power now coming through, there was always power coming through and I knew that. I was always confident. I was never, ever shy about being on stage because I knew that this information would assist others. And I've been on stage since I was three and a half, so there's nothing to be shy about. We're all just the same. The divine presence within you is the divine presence within me. It's the divine presence within all of us. It's the same divine presence. Anyway, we're going to talk about career. Developing your mind through correct career choice will bring you much more money, fulfillment, personal power and success and spiritual fulfillment. Now I wrote all of this stuff and did this all over the world a long time before I met my teacher. Years and years and years and years before that. Or before my teacher's teacher and it was really interesting how it's all one mind because when I first went to my teacher or John and Dara told me about his teacher who was my teacher's teacher, great Mahasiddha, it was interesting how the teachings are so similar to what I had been teaching. However, with that power through it of enlightenment and, through, and all I was really searching for was God. I wanted to find someone in the world who knew God and I found someone, my teacher, and then who knew? Myself. Because you already know God. <laughs> Look in the mirror. Anywho. We all must work, well, some of us don't have to, but most people do, and have a career that empowers us or everything else in our lives will seem meaningless. Our social and family life and even our hobbies will not give us joy as we will be too drained of our energy doing work we do not enjoy to do anything except maybe watch TV. Even if we have a lot of money, it is so important to do something with our life that is empowering to us and fulfilling spiritually. Because otherwise, we really don't have any more energy to do anything. We just get home, order a pizza, watch TV. Even if we had a lot of money, it is so important to do something that is absolutely fulfilling. And then we will be able to empower others which is what this life is all about. It's about raising our energy spiritually and then assisting others by inspiring them by doing the same. If you are working at something you really do not enjoy at all, not even one iota, and it is only to pay the bills, then you will find yourself bit by bit withdrawing from life and from those you love. You'll become one of those people who are always compl complaining, 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 and live their lives for the weekend. This does not make these people bad or wrong. It is simply that they are losing their energy. Their personal power is being drained from them day by day. Now, what do you do when you're in a position where you're not enjoying your life at all. You're in a career that you made a wrong choice when you were maybe 18 or 15 or 16 and you're still doing it because you still don't know what else to do when you grow up and you've got to keep that job to pay the bills. However, I'm telling you now that you can find something else to do and work at night doing it. There are so many different things you can do. I've used this example a lot but this is a true story. Someone came to one of my events in New Zealand. It was a big, big event and she said, I'm an accountant, I hate it, and I don't know what else to do with my life. And this woman was quite big, no judgment about it, but she was just obviously not healthy. And I said to her, come on, there must be something. You may not have ever done it, 
but something within your heart where you feel, well, I think I could do that. I think I'd like doing that. And she said, well, I'd love to be a piano player. And I said, well, what type of piano player? Concert pianist or, you know, she said, no, just in a lobby in a five-star hotel would be great. Not a bar, but just a nice place and just play really nice, you know, nice music. And to be able to do that, she said, I think I'd really love that, really a lot, because I like to be on my own, so accounting sort of suits my personality in that way. And I said, well, why don't you do it? I said, there must be something from a past life or something within you that knows if you've been thinking about this for, and she'd been thinking about it since she was a teenager. For all of these years, why don't you begin learning it? And she said, well, when I get home from work, I'm just too tired. When I'm, you know, doing accounting, it's probably a funny time of the year, nearly coming up on April, where I'll be talking about an accountant. But anyway, <laughs> she said, it's just too draining, my work. She said, I'm good at it because I'm intelligent. And, who, you know, I know how to use calculator and QuickBooks. <laughs> she said, so I'm good at it. But anyway, so we ended up digging deeper and deeper and everyone was really, like, really there for her in this event, which is about 2,500 people. It was a big event, maybe more. And I said, how about this? Throw away your television set. Throw away your dial pizza, because she used to eat a lot of pizza and watch a lot of TV as soon as she got home from work. And I said, just throw away the TV. Just give yourself one year to begin with, just one year where every time you watched television, you will now practice piano. I don't care if you get yourself a little Casio piano to start with, but you take at least one professional piano lesson a week, two if you can, and practice everything that teacher taught you. Just practice it over and over and over again. And other times when you were eating the pizza or whatever you were doing, exercise. Even if you just start stretching your body, just stretching a little bit and change your diet immediately. Because though all of that pizza and the different foods that you've been eating are absolutely playing with your sugar insulin and that's why you've got less and less energy. Because the less energy you use, the less you have. The more energy you use, the more you do, the more energy you've got. I heard from her three years later. She actually did what I said and she got a gig in Sydney. This was in New Zealand in Auckland. I did the event. She got a gig in Sydney at the Regent Hotel, which at the time was like the five-star hotel right on the harbour, right near the Opera House, in the lobby, playing on the grand piano. And the photograph that she sent me, I hardly recognised it because she'd really so much weight. She just looked absolutely just glowing with health and happiness. And she said, I've also meditating and started meditation and... And uh, so things can happen. If you make a decision that you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of your life, you can do it. Like when people say to me, oh, I don't know, I don't have time to do that. I say, do you have weekends off? Because I lived in Asia and people work all weekend. I don't even know what a day off is. Because when you're doing what you love to do, you might have a day off occasionally just to meditate all day, but you're still utilising that meditation to uplift others. If you have 48 hours on a weekend, imagine what you can do. Oh, mind-blowing. And people that complain, by the way, as I said, don't feel bad about yourself. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means you're not happy. You're just not happy. And when we complain, we are complaining because we want to take the focus of the sa off our unhappiness, off the life that we are living that isn't fulfilling, that isn't making us feel, oh, gee, today's great, yay. <laughs> I get to wake up again and do shit. It's awesome. <laughs> so you ask yourself when you complain, what am I afraid of? Am I afraid of losing something? Or not getting something? that I really want or losing something I have, really go in there. Is, it, is that it? What's, what's going on? Am I afraid? What am I afraid of? Oh, I'm just blocking 
I'm just blocking. I don't want to face how unhappy I am. And I feel for you, if you are complaining because you're not happy, I feel so much love and compassion for you because I know within you that you have all of the power and the light and the talent and the gifts that just haven't been brought forth yet to do what you love to do and, and to have such a beautiful life. I know this to be true. Borrow my faith because it's true. And just take a little action like you have right now watching this. Okay. Being happy in your career, in your life, will bring you so much positivity, energy, more prosperity. We put so much of our time in this life into our given occupations that if we are unhappy <coughs> with what we are presently doing, we must begin from this moment, because this is the only thing, time you have is this moment where there is no time, onwards, we have to take action towards doing something new. It doesn't matter if you're 20, 40 or beyond 60 like some of us. <laughs> we can all begin a new career whenever we choose. I don't know how many careers I've had. Wow, so many. Anyway, just stuff you do. It's not who you are. Now, here's an example. You have to remember I wrote this a long time ago. <laughs> I was looking for a good example of someone changing their life after 60. And so I'm not recommending eating Colonel Sanders in any way, shape or form, okay? <laughs> anyway, but look at the man himself. That's what we're doing. We're looking at the man himself. Look at Colonel Sanders. Every day, nearly 8 million customers, I don't know if they're still in business today or even have nearly 8 million customers. I think I saw a Kentucky Fried Chicken the other day. Anyway, nearly 8 million customers are served around the world with the same great taste Colonel Harlan Sanders created more than half a century ago, which is more than half a century now, because I wrote this nearly half a century ago. No, I didn't. Anyway, this man started when he was in his 70s with nothing but a recipe and an old jalopy. Old jalopy means like an old truck, an old car. Yeah, an old truck. This was nearly, well, 50, okay, so I'll say this is nearly 70 years ago. No, 80, 80 years ago, 80 years ago. The Colonel invested what is now called home meal replacement, selling complete meals to harried, time-strapped families. He called it Sunday dinner, seven days a week. Today, the Colonel's spirit and heritage are reflected in KFC's huge success. Colonel Harlan Sanders is one of the best recognized icons in the world. So believe me, it is never too late. There are many other examples besides this great man. And when all of this happened, he always had this great recipe, which he had attempted to sell to restaurants, you know, so that he could get like a commission or just sell it for them to be able to use the recipe. And then he was like, you know, everyone was like, oh, you should be in a retirement home or, you know, retire. And he was going to have to live in like this old retirement village. And all of a sudden he just like, no, I'm not dead yet. What am I doing? I know this recipe is awesome, which it is. I mean, I had tried it when I was younger. And I know that even though I didn't eat meat at the time, I had the, the, the crispy, crispy stuff. Anyway, everyone loved Colonel Sanders. And when it was new to, to go food, like those sort of restaurants were, I don't know, we only, we, in Australia we had Colonel Sanders first Pizza Hut second, that's all we had. McDonald's came later, but anyway, still brilliant. And so he made it, he just kept going, going. And the divine through him, because he never gave up and the energy was there, also got him all that was required for him to be able to franchise what he did and get paid money for the franchise of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Pretty awesome. So you can go to night school. You can work at night learning a new craft, piano playing, computer science, natural health methods, playing any instrument, join a great company. And if you say that you're too tired 
at night after working all day, learn something new at night. You're too tired like that lady from New Zealand. Just say rubbish. It's not the truth. Did you know that you will gain much more energy by working on something new that excites you than any amount of TV could ever bring you? In fact, you will find yourself even happier with what you are doing at your work in your present employment during the day. Everything will look brighter because you have a new vision and a goal. Now, I put this because I was working at so many events all over the world and I saw certain motivational teachers say to people, yeah, just leave your job right now, begin it fresh. And I saw people become homeless doing that. So I never taught that, I taught this. It is very important that you stay at your present employment until you have another job to go to that you know you'll enjoy more or that you have enough money to go out on your own. If it is new employment you are seeking, make sure you do this responsibly by not leaving your present employment until you have new employment. You see, sometimes we are in the correct career, but simply not in the right work environment with the right people to work with. You may simply have to change the environment or change the city. If, we, if what we have to do is to be an employee, we need to find a company that we'd like to work with. You like their mission, their purpose, mission statement. Go and check their mission statement out or vision statement on their websites. So be clear that it is the work and not simply the environment that you do not enjoy before you just say, I'm not going to do that anymore. If you are not sure what you wish to do next, but know you want to change careers, use this affirmation daily. And trust me, my darlings, this works. Get your pen and paper right now. You ready? <clears throat> I, Suzanne Rothschild, Zoila Pies, Trevor Rogers. No, you're happy in your work. <laughs> For those who don't know, that's the guy who works with me. <laughs> Stephen Sollers. <laughs> I, your full name, <clears throat> am now so happy in my new career. I am doing what I love to do. And I am so spiritually fulfilled. And I am making great money doing what I love to do. I love my life now. I am full of energy, peace, harmony, and I'm very grateful and happy. All other areas of my life are now affected in a positive way. I now love my new life. Every day I have a new beginning. I believe in the spirit within myself. I know that I am not alone. God has gone before me and prepared the way, or say the divine, or my higher self, if some of you don't like the word God. And now I know I can achieve anything I set my mind to because I take positive action. Yay! It's all recorded so you can always look back if you're like, I didn't get all that down, Michelle. Calm down. I recommend that you go over this again anyway, this workshop. Now we're going to do a light transmission. Yay! <laughs> so John's going to put on some lovely music and then we're going to do another exercise. Exercise clearer and clearer.